Graphene backup for Microsoft Office 365 is uh, Windows-based software. So we have a ribbon on top here um, where you can add your organizations or modify an organization. You can make a backup job or you can perform a restore. Uh, additionally, in version 3, we added some reports where you can see information about your mailboxes, about your storage consumption, and how your licensing uh, is uh, going on within the product. Now, if you look at object storage, this has been added within the backup infrastructure tab. Um, we have the possibility of adding new object storage, but for the ease of use, I'm going to edit my existing backup storage. It speeds up a little bit the whole demo process. So in this example, I'll go over both Azure Blob and uh, Amazon S3. So by default, we provide, of course, a name and a description. Um, so you could say, uh, for example, Azure Blob uh, for, uh, for example, uh, management or team or something um, plenty of possibilities I'm sure that within your organization you can find a solution as well so the object storage type in this case is Microsoft Azure blob um, but we can also support of course as I said M IBM uh, clouds Amazon s3 or storage on-premise select a Azure storage account which is uh, uh, tied to this uh, Azure blob, select the region, for example, Azure Global or Azure uh, Government, select the container and the folder, and then we have something nice in here for uh, storage consumption is that we can limit the amount of storage being used within object storage. Now, this is done, of course, to control your storage spending. Um, if you're want to make sure that you don't go over a crazy amount due to, for example, a, a ransomware taking over or random data being generated in your OneDrive accounts, uh, then you can easily put an additional protection layer and say, you know, I'm going to limit the storage consumption, for example, to, let's say, to petabytes or two terabytes, um, perfectly possible. Um, you can even go to petabytes, so a lot of options in there. And if we look at, for example, Amazon, there we have a nice little extra as well. So we have an S3 bucket. Again, the same applies here. We select the Amazon S3 uh, storage. We support standard and infrequent access storage classes in case of Amazon. We select our account and our region. And then within the data center location, we have a bucket in a folder. But what's really nice within Amazon is that you can say, I want to use infrequent access storage meaning that if you are going to leverage this then we provide uh, or we can leverage the lowest price per gigabyte do keep in mind that this has a higher cost of retrieval and early deletion fees but this is perfect for storing all the backups where you're probably not going to restore that often from so if you have data in your data organization and you are aware that we will probably maybe restore once or twice a year from this then it could be interesting to leverage this storage class and then save on the total cost once you have added the object storage, you can then configure your backup repositories to extend and to offload the data directly onto the object storage of your choice. So in my example here, I have the one configured for Amazon S3. So the way it works is I specify my location for a local data. Now, what are we going to store locally is a cache, a persistent cache, which contains the metadata of everything that's being backed up. Now, this is done because it allows us, when you're doing a restore, to look locally in the metadata or in that cache. And then when we are actually going to do the restore, we will only talk to the object storage. So in the long term, this saves you a lot of money because we don't have to directly continuously talk with the object storage. Now we just look locally first and then we move on to the object storage. So in the next part, you can say that you're going to offload your backup data to, in my case, the S3 bucket, and there is the encryption option. And, and finally, you have the policy where you have your retention as we already had since version, uh, version one. So in this case, if I create a new one, for example, for Azure Blob, I can say Azure Blob uh, is my target or my name. And I say, for example, I'm going to put it into a local folder called the blob folder. Then I could say offload my data. So you can see here, I can select Azure blob and then I can enable encryption as well, um, where I can just add a new password related to Azure or Azure blob or something specific. Um, you can see that there is a very, um, there's a verification. So you have to double and fill in the password twice. And then finally you can fill in a hint, Azure blob password, for example, um, 
make sure that you put in a proper hint or you don't lose this password because if you lose it we will not be able to recover it nor can we even restore anything from your encrypted backup files and then next of course uh, the next step is of course to define the retention here um, and then we can uh, define the schedule and uh, later on so the next step is creating the backup job. Now I'll quickly go over this. I have an existing backup job with some data. So this is doing backups to S3. It's going to backup my entire organization because I'm a small organization, but you can adjust this to do specific objects. So for example, specific users, specific Office 365 or Active Directory groups, specific SharePoint sites, a lot of options available and you can over them as well. Um, if you say I want to do a specific group, we will do a live query to Office 365 and then you will see the uh, groups in my case. The same for user supplies. Um, you can see a lot of options are available here. Then if you have uh, our backing up, for example, like in my case, the complete organization, there is the option to exclude certain objects, uh, but I'm not going to do that because I want to back up everything. And I will say where I'm going to store data. So in my case, AWS S3 is uh, my target. And I will run this backup job every day uh, at 11 in the evening. Um, but you can do this periodic periodically every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. A lot of options um, to fit your uh, request within the company. So you can see this backup job has uh, already ran. I, I, prepared it before the presentation and now of course when I'm going to do the restore or going to explore my backup you will get a small pop-up when uh, when it's being loaded saying um, for mail item view search and restore data is requested from the object storage repository so charges from reading from the object storage may be built by your specific provider now that doesn't mean that we are going to continuously read as i said we have a local cache so everything you're seeing which is being done in here or loaded into these folders is done and in immediately loaded from my local folder um, if I then need to find something, for example, then I can do a search. Um, the moment I use this advanced find and I need to search for, for example, an email with a specific type of an attachment, then um, we will uh, talk directly into the object storage and potential costs may happen. So as you can see, I have some emails in this folder. And as I said before, I can restore them directly. I can export them. I can save them. I can send them. A lot of options are available. So I can, for example, export this uh, item to my uh, desktop. And you can see that it went successfully. Uh, but then keep in mind that as I read this from object storage, some costs have been uh, put in place to, uh, to perform this restore. Now, as um, we've mentioned before, we also added the ability or the uh, faster backups. The way this works is we can now work with auxiliary accounts. So uh, basically, we work with a Office 365 security group. And within that Office 365 security group, you can add multiple accounts. Um, and these accounts can help you in backing up uh, the SharePoint and OneDrive for business data, making sure that uh, it increases the backup performance, it decreases the backup time and of course it will help in avoid throttling by Microsoft uh, which can potentially happen if you are backing up too fast. 